Greetings! It is I, Tantus Naravan Jacobin, Lord and Emperor of the Jacobin Empire, and welcome. It is time to continue my series of videos on forgotten collectible card games of old. Now, I don't mean forgotten in a literal sense. I just mean these are collectible card games that have less popularity than they once had. Their company that used to support them doesn't support them anymore. And maybe many of the fans have disappeared. This doesn't mean there aren't people still playing them or supporting them in some way out there. It's just they have fallen from the grace that they once were to a much smaller location. Now, I've been talking about Star Trek, the customizable card game, based, of course, on the Star Trek universe. We've been talking about the rules, and we were talking about, last time, facing dilemmas. Now, we faced our dilemmas, we look to our mission. Each mission that you're going to go after has a number of requirements. These are skills and attributes. So once you have overcome all the dilemmas that you must face, any remaining personnel that you have, any remaining unstopped personnel, can attempt to complete this mission. You'll be looking to their skills, and their tributes they have in order to meet this. It is very important to note that at this point in time, you do not need a unstopped personnel to finish this mission that has the affiliation of the mission. You needed one to begin it, but now you don't need one because guess what? The affiliation personnel that you sent on this mission might have been stopped or killed, but you can still attempt it. When you're looking at skills and attributes, they'll be associated with some kind of number, some kind of ranking. You'll have to look to your personnel, and each one will have attributes and skills matching this. If one alone doesn't have it, you can add together the attributes and skills of all the personnel that you have attempt the finishing this mission in order to get these numbers. If you've met all the requirements, you add the numbers together, you have all the attributes. You add the numbers together, you have all the skills. Congratulations, you've completed this mission. You move it half a card rank down towards you from the rest of the missions. Any dilemmas that are on it, stay with it. They have been overcome. They will not return to their owner until the end of the game because they can't be reused again. The point values of this mission is scored by you. You add up your score. This overcome mission cannot be attempted again for the rest of the game. You've finished it. Now, on the other hand, you could fail it then. Guess what? You don't have enough personnel with enough skill, with enough attributes to complete it. You can always try it again. You can even try the same personnel again if it's a subsequent turn, or if you have some way to make a bunch of your personnel unstopped that you could send them to do it again as long as they're not stopped and they're there on the planet or they're there in space, they can do it again. It's the easiest effective thing to say about it. Now, it is very important to note about dilemmas. If you've already overcome some dilemmas and put it under this card, you count up the numbers that are related to those dilemmas, and you subtract it from the number of the dilemmas that your opponent would be drawing to figure out what new dilemmas will be faced here. So the more dilemmas you overcome with a specific mission, the easier it becomes to overcome it again. You've basically eaten up some of the dilemma space. It's important to note that isn't one to one. If that dilemma had a value higher than one before, that's ignored. It's however many dilemmas you have there, you count that up and subtract it down. So there could be more dilemmas that will be put under here and there will, should be still a number, unless they used all one point things and you overcome over all of them and still somehow failed. You might get to a situation where you send personnel in and there's no dilemmas. It can actually happen. Now, other order actions are actions that begin, or are something that begins with the word order. It basically tells you this is an action that you can do during your order phase. And each of them will have their own text about what this kind of action is. This could be any other kind of miscellaneous special action or action that's included to you that specifically takes up this time period, used during this phase of your turn. This also does include interrupts that mention order under them. Those are specific interrupts which are meant to be used, of course, during your gives order phases, which we're right in the middle of now. And this phase lasts until you can't give orders anymore. 
Once you've run out of orders, you can do. Once all your ships are stopped, once all your personnel is stopped, once you've completed everything you can do, you can't do anything else, we're finally ready to move into the last phase of your turn. Now, we take a look at the first thing you're supposed to do, discarding. So we take a look at your hand. If your hand has more than seven cards, during this last phase, the discard phase, as we might want to call it, you discard down to seven. If I have eight cards, I discard one card. If I have ten cards, I discard three cards. Regardless, at the end of my turn, I should have seven cards. Also now, anything that was in play or played that says, at the end of your turn, anything that says that, you activate it. Now, at the end of your turn effects, you only activate once every turn during this end of the turn. And it is important to note, these can be done in any order. That means if I have three at the end of your turn effects, I can choose the order that they actually, at the end of your turn, happen. After this, anything, any ship or personnel under any player that is stopped becomes unstopped. That's the important note here. Every player's personnel and ships that might be stopped become unstopped. Then, any player that has range loss on their ship gets refreshed. Range returns too. So you can see now that everyone is refreshed, meaning that if your opponent did stuff with interrupts and things that might have ate up some of their range or ate up some of their personnel, guess what? They also have them back for their turn. Now you win the game when you meet three requirements. You have to have a hundred or more points. You have to have completed at least one space mission and you have to complete at least one planet mission. When that happens, the game ends right away. Whoever's turn it is, they end their turn, they don't do anything else, no one else can play a turn, it just ends the game right then and there. You count up the points, you check things out, you figure out who won. Now there are other times that the game will end. The other big time is when no one can play draw a card from their deck. Everybody has drawn out their decks. The game ends right there. In this situation, we first look to the highest point value that has also completed a planet and a space mission. If no one meets this requirements, basically no one has both a planet or space mission complete, you look to the highest value that's completed a space mission or a planet mission. Then you look to, then you look to highest score. There are some other ways you can score other than just missions. Missions are the main way. Missions are the main way. But maybe you don't have a mission complete, then of course, yes, score. Finally, if there is two people that qualify for whatever it is in this combination of things at the exact same time, they tie. That means there's no one higher up in any of these categories than any of these people. They're exactly the same, tie. So ties can occur at this kind of final scoring part of it. Now, when we're moving on to actually the gameplay itself, you're gonna want a deck of your own. Every person will customize your own deck made from your cards that you've been collecting. There are important factors to the deck. You will need five missions. You will need at least 25 dilemma. You'll need at least 20 dilemma cards at least, because this is a minimum of 60 cards. And then you will need at least 35 cards for your main deck. So you can see you're gonna have three different, two different piles and your mission spread out in front of you. But together these three factors add up to 60. When you're building these decks, you may have no more than three cards with the same title. Now this is a confusing thing. Title, what does this mean? Well, I'm not talking about subtitles. Subtitles, you can have all different ones. These don't matter as much. They could be the same too. Titles is what's important. A great example of titles would be, of course, Jean-Luc Picard, captain of the Next Generation Enterprise. So you could have a Jean-Luc Picard A. He's got a specific subtitle. And guess what? Oh, I have a Jean-Luc Picard B. These are two cards that are different, but have the same title, Jean-Luc Picard. 
their subtitles, A and B, are different. So I could have three different John Luc Picards, or I could have three John Luc Picards that are completely the same. But this is the maximum amount of noun amount of John Luc Picards I can have. So you can see there is similarities, definitely, because they're both all called John Luc Picard. In fact, they could be three copies of the same thing. But even if they're not exactly the same, as long as they're John Luc Picard, I can only have three of them at most. And this holds true of anything with a title. Ships, personnel, items, anything. But that's it for today. I finished the basic rules. I finished talking about completing missions, possibly failing missions, and basically the rest of the orders phase. I then moved into the discard phase, where you discard your hand, you resolve your end of turn things, and of course you resolve being stopped, and range, refreshing those. I then talked about how to win the game, how many points you have to score, and mentioning a little bit about building your own deck, the basic rules that you're going to have to know about it. In the next episode, we're going to dive into other rules we want to talk about. These are things beyond these very basics that will probably come up in the course of one of your games that we're going to need to know about. So we are going to go about over these other rules. But if you have any questions, comments, anything you want to say, anything you think I left out, please leave in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. It's your support of the channel, the empire, the work I do. If you want to show some extra support, you can always check out my Patreon in the description below. There's some great rewards there. Helps to grow and improve the channel and the empire. But regardless, until the next time, I bid you farewell.